I'm Leon Barnard. Uh, I'm one of the members of the education team here at Balsamic. Um, today, as you know, um, we're going to be talking about wireframes, agile, user stories, um, all that kind of good stuff. Um, there should be time at the end for questions. Um, if you have them, I'd love to have some conversations. Um, and then if you think of any questions along the way, um, you can use the, the Q&A feature in Zoom, and I will get to those um, at the end. So before we get started um, in earnest, um, a quick note, we're going to be recording this um, and then putting it on our YouTube channel. Um, I don't think we're going to be recording any of your personal information um, uh, for the YouTube uh, recording, but um, if you really want to um, you know, not share your name or anything, you can ask questions anonymously in the, in the Q&A feature um, if you don't feel like sharing your name. Uh, so this webinar is based on an article I wrote a few years ago about using agile um, and wireframes, uh, using, sorry, using wireframes and agile user stories together, um, which was based on my experience working as a UX designer in an agile development environment. Um, there's the link here on the, on the screen that you can read it, um, where you can find it. It's on our Balsamic Wireframe Academy site, which is at balsamic.com slash learn. Um, so today I'll be going through some of the points that I made in the article, as well as some broader ideas about Agile in general and some other things that I've learned um, since writing that article. So um, here's what we'll be covering today. Um, just zooming way out and talking about what Agile is, uh, what user stories are, um, how Agile and UX do and don't uh, work so well together, why they're not necessarily best friends forever, but um, but sometimes they can get along too. And then also the roles that wireframes pl play in Agile and user stories, and then really diving into the nitty gritty of using wireframes with Agile stories. And then we'll um, end with time for some, from que some questions. Um, so what is Agile? Uh, I feel like a lot of talks about these sort of things don't, um, don't really go back to the beginning and, and really talk about what Agile is and what it's all about. Um, so Agile was created as a way to prevent problems caused by traditional waterfall development, um, specifically um, the inability of waterfall to adapt to changes in user or business priorities, um, and also the challenges of communicating between departments, such as between business and development, design, business development, um, all of those um, in waterfall development were very siloed. Um, and it's really more of a philosophy of software development um, that's centered around efficiency and quality and reducing waste. Um, um, so yeah, in before Waterfall, um, software development was more like an assembly line. So you'd have a product manager who would write a big, long requirement specification document. Then they'd hand it off to the design team if there was one that would create a big, um, involved, detailed prototype. Um, and then they would hand that over to the development team who would then go on a multi-month long process of building what they understood the design and requirements to be. And there really wasn't a lot of communication back and forth. It was just really handing things from one uh, department to another. Everything was very linear, linear and kind of throwing things over the wall um, to the next department. Uh, and uh, But in 2001, a bunch of people got together, um, uh, senior software development and business people, uh, to come up with a see if they could come up with a better way of making software. And then what came out of that was called the Manifesto for Agile Software Development. Um, this is the website that they made for it. Um, it's very old, but it's still around. Um, it's nothing fancy. It's actually very short and easy to read. Um, AgileManifesto.org. Um, I really recommend reading it. It's it's useful um, to kind of understand where they're coming from and, and really what the philosophy is behind it. And it's it's actually a very short read. Um, there's one main page and then there's another page called the 12 Principles of Agile Software, which is linked from that first page. Um, also very, very short and easy to read. Um, here are three of them that I picked out, which are some of my favorites, um, which also happen to be the ones that seem to kind of get left behind often and, and forgotten about. Um, so the fourth principle is business people and developers must work together daily throughout the project. The sixth one, 
the most efficient and effective method of conveying information to and within a development team is face-to-face -face communication. So these two are really, um, in my opinion, not happening enough, but I think a really good thing about Agile that says that, you know, it's really all about people talking to each other, um, uh, which is very hard in large organizations, but it really is at the root of Agile. Um, and then the last one, I, or not the last one, but the 10th one I really like, um, simplicity, which they describe as the art of maximizing the amount of work not done is essential. So it really gets back to that theme of reducing waste. Um, so we'll kind of keep these in mind um, and come back to them as we as we go uh, go on. Um, so um, it's important to think that to understand that agile is really a series of kind of more principles, uh, more than a set of procedures or rules to follow. Um, you know, people love to argue about things on the internet, uh, especially agile. Um, some people hate agile, some people love it. Um, and I don't know, my take is somewhere in between. Um, I like this article that I saw recently. It was written by an author um, writing a response to someone who complained about a previous article he wrote saying that, you know, apparently that agile was terrible and that he didn't understand it. Um, so uh, a selection from his article that was in response to the criticism was that companies hire Agile for a variety of reasons. Some see it as a way to ensure high code quality, others see it as a way to increase production, yet others see it as a way to be more customer-centered. Just because it's codified in a manifesto or guide or book doesn't mean everyone understands it the same way, applies it in the same way, or uses it for the same purposes. And I think that's okay. Um, you know, Agile has been adapted, modified, even corrupted in many different ways. Um, but the most important thing is that the, you know, if you're applying is it, uh, is that the spirit of it remains. Agile was created to reduce waste in the development process, not create strict dogma. So uh, in my opinion, the spirit of it is much more important than, than how you execute it. So again, let's keep that in mind um, as, we, as we go on. Um, so now to user stories. What are user stories? Um, user stories are a tool um, for making software according to Agile principles. Um, what separates them um, from traditional ways of doing things is that they're focused on the user, um, they're, they're focused on delivering small chunks of working code, and they're really designed to be efficient and flexible. Um, they're just a way of implementing Agile. They're focused on user needs and real problems instead of features. They're small in scope on purpose to allow for changes. And they're, they're minimal on purpose to reduce the amount of time that you spend writing them so that you're not spending uh, weeks and weeks writing big, long specifications. Um, so what's with that weird story format that you always hear about, you know, as a blank, I want to blank so I can blank, um, you know, do you have to do that? And why is it like that? Um, uh, again, I think really the spirit of it matters. Um, there's a good reason for doing it that way um, that they suggested that, you know, the goal is to create working software that solves real problems for real people. Um, it doesn't mean that you necessarily have to stick to the exact format. Um, you just want to stick to the spirit of it. For example, this, uh, as a user, I want a login page so that I can log in is not a good user story. Um, it's not specific about what kind of user it applies to. The feature isn't something that actually adds value, nor does the story explain what the user is really trying to do. So if you're just going to write agile stories and do it this way and say, I'm doing agile the way it's meant to be done, um, that's really not... Uh, the best way to to approach it so if this is your user story for example like um you know you could say okay a user wants a, a login screen but do they really want a login screen and moreover do they even need a screen you can say well sure they don't want one but they they need one you have to log in well what about desktop apps you know i mean for a very long time people just loaded applications on their computer and it's stored and saved all their data on the computer because um uh, you know, and that was that was fine. Um, um, so what they really want is what people really want is not a login page, but they want their work and their settings to be there when they leave and come back. And so typically on the web on the web, that means associating a username with their data. And people also don't want other people getting into their data and messing with things. So they usually also need a password. 
but there are lots of way, other ways to do it. Um, you know, if your data is stored on a computer, then it's clear that it belongs to you. And as long as your computer is with you, nobody else can access it. Um, and this, any Wordle fans out there, um, I got it in three today, so I'm very proud of myself. Uh, Wordle is a web app application um, that stores your data when you come back, but it doesn't have a login. It just has a simple thing for, um, you know, saving your data in, you know, in your cookies or cache or memory or whatever. Um, this would not be a good idea for sensitive or mission critical data, but for a simple game, it works. And I think it's actually a big part of the success is that it doesn't force you to log in. So, um, you know, you really want to think about what people's goals are and think more broadly. Um, so now to the whole like UX and agile getting along thing. Um, a lot has been said already. I won't get into it too much. Um, design definitely doesn't fit into Agile as neatly as development does. It wasn't really um, created around that as much, but people are still kind of figuring out. Um, one thing I've noticed is that people love coming up with drawings to represent like how Agile and UX can work together. Um, somehow they all involve loops and arrows connected together, kind of moving forwards. Uh, you know, there's a lot of overlapping things and processes and arrows. Uh, here's just a few that I found. Everybody seems to be looking for the, the best way to represent it visually. Um, to me, they always kind of like remind me of this. So here's my, here's my contribution to how Agile and UX should work together. Um, no, but, um, but seriously, there are some kind of fundamental conflicts. Here's another article um, about uh, describing how Agile UX, and then another thing called Lean UX, all define done differently. Um, so suffice it to say that there's challenges, but there's a lot of people thinking about it. Um, and in some places, it's getting better. Um, some of the authors um, that I mentioned in this are Jeff uh, Gottelf and Josh Seiden. Um, they wrote a book called Lean UX, which is just came, the third edition just came out, which is pretty good. So if you're going to read one book about um, Agile and UX working together. Uh, this is a, one that I recommend. Um, so where do wireframes fit into all of this? Why are we talking about wireframes here? Um, so even though wireframes or really any design artifacts aren't mentioned anywhere in the Agile manifesto, when I read it, um, I can't help but think that wireframes are to design what Agile is to development. I think that wireframes are really uh, perfectly suited for, for Agile. You know, if you think about Agile, it's all about speed, flexibility, reducing waste, um, you know, uh, communication and participation across departments and disciplines. And wireframes are very quick to create. They're very easy to change, very flexible. They really give you a high return on your time investment. Um, they can be made by anybody. They can be understood by anybody. They really facilitate this shared understanding so I think that they're really a, an ideal artifact um, for agile processes. Um, the author of Lean, Lean UX, um, when he was writing it, uh, he wrote an article that I really like. Um, it really resonated with me and I go back to it a lot. Um, it doesn't, it mentions wireframes a few times, but it doesn't, it's not really centered around them, but I can't help but think about them when he talks about getting rid of de uh, deliverables by which he means like, big documents um, and specifications so that you can focus on doing basically as little design as possible to move things forward in order to ship good software. That's kind of the main point of this article, um, which I which I really recommend. Um, uh, you know, again, the Agile Manifesto says that individuals and interactions um, should be prioritized over processes and tools, and that working software is more important than comprehensive documentation. So some of the quotes from this article are that, um, you know, his, this, his philosophy of Lean UX is that traditional documents are discarded or stripped down to their bare components and only provide the minimum amount of information necessary to get started on implementation. And that's, I think, exactly what wireframes do. Um, another suggestion for uh, this Lean UX approach is to keep the deliverables light and editable and eliminate waste by not spending hours getting the pixels exactly right and the annotations perfect. And again, um, that's really what, what wireframes are about, at least the way that I like to use them. Um, Sorry. Um, so I think that, you know, if you make wireframes the, the right way, they, they are agile. That is agile. Um, you know, we, we wrote some principles about um, how do wireframe 
frame it effectively. And a lot of them, you know, read a lot like um, the Agile Manifesto, in my opinion, you know, by being less detailed, wireframes actually encourage individuals and interactions. They don't necessarily have all the answers. And what that does is that encourages you to go out and talk to people, talk to the PM, the business person, the designer, um, to clarify things. They're lightweight and deliver they're deliberately not comprehensive. They're not supposed to have all of the information in them. Um, and so one thing that I learned when I was designing is that, um, you know, designs that you would do that look good in a portfolio are probably not going to be good for, um, you know, as effective in a real world project because you want to design for understanding and agreement. And that, that means that it doesn't necessarily always look great um, because you don't need all that extra detail um, in order just to move things forward. Um, so now to kind of the what I wrote about in my article um, uh, about using wire, wireframes and user stories together. So um, when I was working as a UX designer, here are some things that I um, learned and did um, to use uh, wireframes and user stories um, better together. Um, so all these are based on, um, you know, real work that I did. Um, here's some examples from my a previous job writing user stories, just to give you kind of a preview of what they looked like. Um, and I'll go through them in more detail um, in the upcoming slides. But here's kind of some of my examples of having wireframes embedded within um, user stories. So my first tip is that you don't have to stick to the script, which is kind of what I talked about before. Um, so what I used to do is for the title of the story, I, instead of giving, instead of providing the whole thing, I would just say who the user is and what they want to do as kind of a, a shorthand way to reference it. So user wants to, or would like to do some action, which is explains, you know, what, what are we doing? Uh, what is this, um, you know, piece of, what is the story about? And then, and then I would go into more detail in the body of the story. So I would provide some context. And then I would describe the solution and then describe the benefit to the user. So um, that part is really all about, all about describing why, why it matters, why we're doing this. Um, and you'd be surprised that people actually really care about that. Um, you know, so when you're writing user stories, you should think about writing whatever is most helpful and it still fits the spirit of Agile. And it doesn't always have to be the same. Some of the stories, um, the kind of the narratives, the descriptions can be shorter, some have to be longer if there's more to explain, but finding a way to kind of succinctly capture um, to whoever's reading the story, like why it matters. Um, the second tip, uh, divide to conquer. Um, so this is kind of my one tip about reconciling UX and Agile is that it's very hard to design in an Agile way. So design just one little piece of functionality um, you know, because as designers, we think about the big picture and we want to, um, when you're designing, you want to be thinking about, um, you know, the, the next steps or you want to be thinking about, um, you know, thinking in a, in a bigger way. And that doesn't always fit with Agile. So what I used to do is I would kind of design, come up with my design ideas, not really thinking about, um, about Agile. And then after that, I would look at the design and I would think, okay, how can we split up this, this design so that it, it it's split into different features or different pieces of code that can be written independently. And then I would think about that. And then after that, I would write up stories for each different phase of the design. Um, so this is this is hard and it depends um, on the, the, the design too and the goal. Um, and also one thing to note is that the way you prioritize or order these stories is also very important. And it also depends, what you'll learn is that some things are easier for developers to um, code than others. So something that, that might seem like a very small part of your design might be very labor intensive, for example. Um, but as you're doing this, if you're doing this, don't assume that your design is going to end up the way that you designed it in the first place. And that's kind of the point of Agile is that some things, uh, everything you deliver should be functional on its own. Um, so uh, a while ago, somebody emailed me about the article I'd written and said, could you kind of explain that part to me? So I created this um, diagram for them. So the part at the top is supposed to represent kind of your 
your agile board, your Kanban, uh, whatever, where you have the different swim lanes, where you pick up your stories and, and start them and move them over. So let's say, um, you know, you have the same design idea that I showed in the previous slide of kind of this table with these actions. Um, what you might do is you would say, so if you look at that done column, it says the table and the contents. So assume that so that is the first story that has to be done. And so assume that one is done. And then you might say, okay, the next step is to add search because we've decided that that's the next most important thing. So that's in progress. So in progress result would be the table and the content and the search. And then you have two stories that haven't been started yet, which are adding export functionality and edit and delete functionality. And note that both of these can be done, uh, could be done. Uh, one of them could be done. Neither of them could be done. But the um, you know functionality is still able to be used um, by the user, and there's still a benefit to them. So that's kind of maybe a little bit more detail on how I picture that. Um, and just a reminder that it's it's always good to include context in your story. So even if you're not always breaking it up neatly. Um, you can still include parts of the design that are outside of the scope of the user story. Um, you know, just find, just make sure it's clear to whoever's reading it that this is not in scope. You know, if you can't read this little note, um, it says future functionality. So there's part of the design that's kind of grayed out. Um, and the reason that um, I used to do that is because people like to see the bigger picture. It can help them understand what they're doing, where they're going, um, and just kind of give them more motivation, more understanding. Um, third step is write a recipe, um, which I called it, you know, think about what the developer needs to know when they're um, writing this, when they're writing the code for this story, you know, how might you translate your design into a recipe for how to build it? Um, and this can be hard if you're not a developer, um, but that's okay. You know, if you don't know, um, if you're not sure about this, ask the developer what's useful for them, you know, I mean, Think of that agile um, principle of individuals and interactions. You're encouraged in agile to talk to people outside of your department. Um, so that's actually a good thing. Um, and then as the more you do this, you'll get better at it. You'll learn what things are important for developers to know, what things are not important. Um, so make sure you get feedback on what was useful. Um, and um, you know, in, in the article I wrote, I say, you know, try to imagine yourself using this feature. What are the things that you know, try to picture it in your head and what are the things that you might need to know or what are the actions you might perform and how that, uh, how is that information useful for the person building it? Um, it might also help you think of anything that you missed. Oh, I forgot about what happens if I, you know, click the cancel button or the next button or whatever. And in that case, then update to update the, the design. Um, so in the article I wrote, there's a little bit more on that. Um, and then the last thing is when possible, um, you know, get to know your developers, find out what information they need, customize your stories for them based on what they need. Um, so this is from my article, um, you know, and the, so that image on the, on the right is that some developers I found, they like a lot of visual detail and they don't, you know, they look at the, the wireframe first and they don't really care much about the text. And then um, other developers are the opposite. They just wanna just give me a list of things that I need to do I'm not a visual person or whatever. Um, so what I had written is that, that every developer is different. You may end up changing the level of detail based on um, your team. Um, some just look at the wireframe, some will go straight to the acceptance criteria, some improvise when details are missing and then others refuse to continue until you know, they get clarification, um, you know, unless everything is specified in the story. Um, so try to learn their styles and preferences and then ultimately take responsibility for making the story clear and easy to understand. If um, the developer doesn't implement it the way you planned, you know, that's because you weren't clear about it. So don't just say, oh, well, they did it wrong. Um, so, and even if you don't get it right, then, you know, as I said, these conversations should be expected. So it's good if they come to you with questions and say, I don't know what you, what you meant by that. Um, even better than that, um, as you're writing the story, as you're making the wireframe, go to the developers and show them what you're working on and say, do you understand this? Is there anything I can do to clarify it? Um, you know, maybe even get some ideas from them about what do you think 
uh, is good, help them have them contribute to the design so that they feel invested in it. And so when it goes over to them and they start working on it, they already kind of know it and, and understand it. Um, so recapping uh, what we covered here, um, that's pretty much it for the content. Um, so Agile was created to avoid the problems of waterfall development. Um, you know, it's, it's really meant to avoid the things that were bad about software and the waterfall method. So um, it's just a way to try to make things better. It's not, they're not saying you have to do it this way. It's just saying, we know that there were a lot of problems before, so let's see what we can do to fix them. Um, so in that, um, uh, you know, in that light, you know, follow the spirit of Agile and use, use their stories more than the rules. Um, and also wireframes, I think, are inherently agile artifacts. Um, and then these, these tips that I wrote about, um, you don't have to stick to the script. You know, divide up your stories if you can. Write a recipe. Try to give instructions to your developers um, to make it clear what they need to do. And then know your audience. And your audience is the, the developers, the people who will be writing the code on it. And make sure that they understand uh, what your intent uh, is. Um, so before we get to questions, a quick plug for our user research program, um, sign up at balsamic.com slash support slash make us better. Um, here's a couple of uh, perks, a couple of things about it. Um, it's really helpful for us. Um, it doesn't take much of your time. So um, it'd be great if you could sign up at that um, URL. I will post these slides after uh, when we put this up on our website. So in case you forget or need any links. Um, thank you very much. So again, my name is Leon Barnard. Um, uh, you can contact me at leon at balsamic.com. My Twitter handle is at Leon Barnard. Um, this is our website called Balsamic Wireframing Academy. It's balsamic.com slash learn. A lot of the information that I talk about and in this webinar and other ones um, is here or it will be soon. Um, so. Uh, just a plug for that. Uh, everything on there is free. And now we can move on to some questions. I will stop sharing my screen. Thank you so much for your attention. And I will stop sharing so we can have a conversation.